Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. Today I wanted to show you how you can inject data from one request to the other. So in this request, I'm trying to submit an order and I have to provide here a toll ID. Now the thing is, I have here another endpoint which provides me with actually 20 tool IDs and I need to test each of them. And what I don't want to do is to go through the entire list manually or to duplicate this submit order request. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you a better way on how we can do this by using some scripts and automation within Postman. So in order to get this to work in Postman, what we need to do is to understand like two important concepts. The first concept is about using Postman variables to pass data from one request to the other. And the other one is to understand how to build workflows. So let's take them one by one. First, let's take a look at the first request and try to understand how we can get to this data. We want to have essentially all the IDs that we see here in the response. So what we're gonna do is gonna write a bit of a script to extract this data from the response and put it in a separate list of IDs. So I'm gonna switch here to the tests. And the first thing that we need to do is to parse the response. So I'm going to define a variable called response. And I'm going to parse it with pm.response.json. So this will store essentially the response in a JavaScript object. Now, the next thing is we don't need the entire response. We are just interested in the IDs that we see here. So what we would like to do next is to create an array only with these IDs. And fortunately in JavaScript, that's quite easy. Let's define another variable. Let's call it tool IDs because this contains only IDs. And what we can do is we can use the map function, which is available for any JavaScript array. So we can write here something like response.map. And what map does, it goes through each element of the array. So each element of the array is essentially each object that you see here. And it will allow us to extract only the information that we're interested in. So we can write something like tool, because essentially every object is a tool. And we're gonna write here an arrow function, and I'm gonna write here tool.id. Okay, so we can use then console log to inspect the value of this variable. And I'm gonna open the console here. Click on send. And what you will get back is a list with 20 IDs. So that will make our life a bit easier in terms of working with this data. If we only have the data that we're trying to use in the next request. Next, what we can do is to set this in a Postman variable so that we can use this data in the next request. And I'm gonna use a local Postman variable because this is kind of like transactional data, I don't want to store it in a global variable or in a collection variable. Essentially, this data, if we use local variables, it will disappear after the execution. But this is also the type of variables that only work in the collection runner. So I'll show you in a minute what I mean by that. And it's pm.variables.set. And we're going to set here tool IDs. and the value will be the same as the JavaScript variable. So let's go now to the submit order request. In this case, we wanna replace this value with a Postman variable. And we're getting this data and we're trying to change it right before the request goes out. And for that reason, we'll have to work with a pre-request script because this is the kind of script that's executed before the request is being sent out. If you write here a test, the request has already been sent, so it may be a bit too late to set any variables or to manipulate this data in somehow. So going to the pre-request script, let's define here a variable, I'm gonna call it tool IDs. And we're gonna try to extract the data that we have set in the previous request. So we have here pm.variables.get and the variable name is tool IDs. So this is essentially the same list of variables that we had before. We have set a variable and then we have this list available in the submit order. Now, of course, 
we can only submit one request at a time, only one value at a time. We cannot submit all values in the body. There's only one tool ID that we can submit. So what we want to try to do is to run this request multiple times, but let's try and run it once. So how do we get to the first ID? So what we're going to do here is we're going to use something like tool IDs dot shift. So what shift will do is we'll take the first element in the array, we'll return it. It means we can put it here in a variable, we can use it, and we'll also modify the original array, which is the tools ID. So let's say, for example, we want to write it in a variable called tool ID. So pm.variables.set. We can also name it something like current tool ID so that we don't have any confusion. And I'm gonna take this, give it as a value. So we're setting a variable called current tool ID. We're gonna use this in the request. So now this is the part where this becomes dynamic. So we're getting the first value, we're setting a variable with it, we're using it in the request. So let's give it a try and see how this works. I'm going to use here the collection runner. And remember, for Postman local variables, you cannot view it anywhere in the Postman user interface. Uh, if you need to view any values, you have to use console log. It's going to run here this. Uh, the first request has been executed. The second request has been executed. And if you look here at the request body, we'll be able to see that tool ID has been properly filled with a valid value. Okay. So that's the first thing that we need to take care of. And now the thing is, well, we want to use this 20 times. How can we rerun this request, but not with a different data? So in order to uh, create a specific workflow in Postman, we will use something that's called Postman set next request. So Postman set next request, and don't confuse it with, don't write PM that set next request, that will not work. You have to write Postman that set next request. This function will essentially tell Postman where to go next, where to go after executing this request. So you cannot change. Once you are inside the pre-request script, you're still executing this request. You can only decide what will happen after this. And you can run set next request from the pre-request script or from test, doesn't really matter. Just gonna keep it here. So we have to tell Postman where to go next. So essentially we have extracted the first element. We have set it in a variable, we've used it. So we want to go back, essentially. So where we want to go back is to this submit order. So what set next request will do is we'll take a request name. It's not a request URL or something like that. You have to name it exactly as you have here inside your collection. So what we want to do here is we want to go back to the same request. So we're going to go back to submit order once again. So let's take a look at what's happening right now. I'm going to run here collection. You will see now that this submit order is going on and on and on and on. And it's never going to stop because we have essentially instructed Postman to run this request forever. So I'm going to go here and stop run. And let's take a look at what's going on. So we have here the submit order. We have the request body 4643, right? What do we have next? Request body 1225. Okay. So obviously there's something happening here. So this is changing all the time. But what's happening here, for example? We'll see here that at one point we don't have any data anymore. So uh, we're essentially running out of data and ideally we should stop the execution. So in Postman, the way we stop the execution is again, we use Postman set next request. And the way we stop the execution is by saying null. So essentially by saying null, we're telling Postman, after you have executed this request, this current request, don't go anywhere else. So essentially we want to do that when we know that we have no other elements in our uh, array, essentially. So the tools IDs, as soon as after shifting it the last time, we know that it is empty, 
it doesn't really make sense to go again and to run it again. So what we'll do here, we'll have to create a NIF block. So we'll decide here, for example, let's check if this is an array. So we can use something like array is array, just to make sure that this is really an array. And then a second condition would be tool IDs dot length. This is a property on an array. It tells us how many elements are in the array. So as long as the length is greater than zero, what we're going to do, we're going to run this request here. Okay. Otherwise, if this length is not zero, then it's time to stop. So let's open the collection runner once again and run it. And you will see now the execution stops. We can take a look at the first element. What was this? 4643. Uh, we can also compare it with what we have in our list. So 4643. The last element should be 3486. So let's take a look at the last request. Request body 3486. Now the collection runner is not a tool that can uh, run all the submit order in parallel. So they will only work one after the other. This is how this Postman workflows work. You have to wait for one request to complete. And then uh, essentially Postman looks, okay, where should I go next? I'm going to submit order once again, and so on. You cannot submit all these requests altogether. This is not the kind of workflows that Postman can do. Now you're probably wondering, how exactly did this variable with all the tool IDs get updated? Because we have received it here on this line, and then we have set the current tool ID, but we haven't reset the entire array. And the thing is, the moment we use here pm.variables.get on an object or on an array, we're actually getting a reference to the object that is stored by Postman, which essentially means if we're making changes to it, we don't need to use pm.variables.set again because any changes we make to the object will be automatically saved in the variable. And this is also the case with tool IDs.shift. So when we're calling this, we're making changes on the variable itself. And in this case, any changes we make will be automatically persisted by Postman. So we don't need to use pm.variables.set to set the entire array. If this was a primitive value, for example, a number or a string, we still have to use uh, the set function. But for objects and arrays, this is not needed. I hope this tutorial was helpful. And if that was the case, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the section below and consider subscribing for more tutorials like this one. Hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.